Larry Holmes was the only man to ever take the championship from Ali and keep it, defending his title an incredible 19 times. He cried after his victory over Ali, upset at having to hurt his hero, who was at that point deep into his physical decline. In part because he'd beaten Ali, and in part because he was an Ali, Holmes was never really given a fair shake by the public or the press. Which is a shame, as he's one of the most skilled heavyweights in history, with one of the most unique, interesting, and powerful styles ever seen in the ring. Ironically, Holmes fought much like Ali, with a bit of foreman thrown in. Holmes had head movement and footwork reminiscent of Ali, and guard manipulation tactics reminiscent of foreman. And while Holmes' similarities to Foreman are almost certainly coincidental, Holmes' similarities to Ali are almost certainly from his time spent as his longtime sparring partner. At the same time, Holmes was very much his own fighter, creating fascinating new tactics out of the old that better fit his own proclivities. In this way, he kept to the principle, absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add what is essentially your own. Like Ali and Foreman, Holmes kept a loose, sometimes very low guard, which helped him to pull off the footwork and head movement tactics of Ali, and the guard manipulation and wrestling tactics common to Foreman. While this guard choice came with a number of obvious risks, Holmes was skilled enough to take full advantage of the many benefits. For instance, low hands not only helped Holmes maintain balance as he circled and jabbed, but they also enticed opponents to headhunt. When they did, Holmes would pull and slip, turning his head to just let opponents' punches skim his cheek. It's probably a fairly safe assumption he learned this technique while sparring with Ali. If Holmes needed space, he would step back to southpaw, which also helped to cut angles while escaping corners. By making opponents miss like this just as they were about to land, Holmes was able to drain their energy, stay in range while keeping both hands free, and of course, follow up with hard counters. This type of head movement paired very well with Holmes' footwork. Holmes danced like the butterfly, stepping deep to the inside to open up angles, then cross-stepping and hopping to extend his reach. He also stung like a bee, whipping out his jab with his hands low, which helped him to maintain balance and disguise the path of his punches. But where Holmes differed from Ali was how he circled to the outside. While Ali would laterally shuffle in a fairly squared up stance and throw a few punches, Holmes would cross step outside with his lead leg. just as Ali did with his rear leg while circling inside. Just like the cross step to the inside, the outside cross step kept Holmes' stance more narrow, allowing him to stay safe while extending the distance of his jab. And the same way that Ali could inexplicably throw hard right hands off of a rear cross step while moving inside, Holmes could set up hard right hands by pivoting out of his lead cross step while moving outside. In both instances, it was the extreme angle that helped set up the punch. Ali's inside circling aligning the punch down the middle, and Holmes' outside circling sneaking it around the side. But it was not Holmes' cross, but his jab that was the center of his entire game. In fact, many will argue that Holmes had the best jab of all time, even surpassing Ali's. Like most great outfighters, Holmes had multiple kinds of jabs. He could throw them from his hip or his shoulder from any different direction. He could flick them out like Ali, or pawn jolt like Foreman. 
But what truly made Holmes' jab unstoppable was his unpredictability. Few were ever as adept at disguising their jab as Holmes, and he mainly did this through rhythmic preparatory motion. Since preparatory movements are telegraphic by nature, usually opponents can pick up on them. That's why every boxer is told on day one to never pull their punch back before they throw it. But preparatory motions can be disguised. Holmes disguised the preparatory motions for his jabs by putting them into rhythmic patterns. And part of what made him unique is that he had so many of them and paired them with his many different jabs. For instance, he liked to swing his arm back and forth to set up his flicking, backfist-like jabs. This was especially great when combined with dancing. Likewise, he would pump his arm forward and back to hide straight jabs. Or he would go high and low to leave opponents guessing if the jab was coming straight from his shoulder or up from his hip. Holmes would even probe at his opponent's guard with a consistent rhythm, conditioning them to getting touched. This dulled their senses so they were unprepared for when the real punch came. But the movement pattern is only half the story. Holmes' rhythm not only disguised his punches by blending with them, it also gave him opportunities to manipulate his opponent's expectations, first by conditioning them to expect a certain tempo, and then altering it. One way he did this was by rapidly speeding up the tempo his opponent had become accustomed to. Another way was to suddenly pause, stuttering his movement to trick his opponent into anticipating a punch at the wrong time. Then he would fire off the real attack. The best case scenario was when opponents tried to parry a punch that never came, leaving them open for the real punch. This is what Bruce Lee referred to as getting the opponent to parry past the punch. This same tactic also gave Holmes an idea as to when an opponent might try an attack. As many opponents would try to target the openings created by Holmes each time he moved his arm away. This technique can be thought of as rhythmic drawing. Holmes' jab opened the door for the rest of his punches to come through. But Holmes was too nuanced to simply wail on opponents the moment he had a chance. In boxing, that's a good way to get knocked out. Instead, he ensured his punches had the best chance of landing and dealing damage while remaining as safe as possible. And he did this by making adjustments mid-combination, changing angles by moving laterally throughout the exchange. Holmes loved to do this with body shots. He would cut angles to the inside or outside, circumventing his opponent's guard to punch through their arms. Preempting this with a jab enticed opponents to raise their guard, creating a larger target. While body shots were useful, one of the top weapons in Holmes' arsenal, the grenade launcher really, was his lateral sidestep and rear hook to the outside. Once again, combining them with a pivot or sidestep helped Holmes to sneak the punch around his opponent's guard. Holmes would also trick his opponents by leading them inside first. When the opponent kept following, Holmes would change direction by stepping out to the right. With this tactic, Holmes' opponents were pretty much helping to create the angle for him. Holmes was even adept at throwing hard power shots while backing up again constantly cutting angles to create openings as he did so. Here's where one more benefit of Holmes keeping his hands low came in. Because he threw from his hip, opponents had trouble knowing which punch was coming until the very last moment. Since the windup was near the same, competitors couldn't tell if he was going to throw a body shot, overhand, uppercut, hook, or cross. It was a difficult choice to pick correctly each time, to say the least. So Holmes had head movement and footwork similar to Ali, 
but somehow he also melded in guard manipulation and long guard tactics similar to Foreman. Rather than keep a tight guard, Holmes was constantly reaching out, probing and disturbing his opponent's balance. And this brought him great results, both offensively and defensively. Defensively, Holmes used long guard tactics to throw opponent's punches off course. Rather than cover block close to his body, Holmes preferred to leverage block, shooting his arm out straight to dispel the force of the punch. Unlike cover blocks, leverage blocks could immediately be turned into frames or holds, or even used to block another punch as Holmes moved further off angle. Holmes also liked to reinforce his leverage blocks with cover blocks or parries. Yet another tactic was to stunt opponent's trunk movement by pushing against their head or shoulders, steering them off balance. By cross-framing, moving one hand over the center line to control the opponent's opposite side, Holmes could block off both sides from attack at once. Once again, Holmes liked to use another hand to reinforce his first, creating an additional point of control. Occasionally, Holmes could even use the angles created to land huge power shots before opponents even knew what hit them. Holmes was so disciplined about this type of defense that he framed against opponents at the end of nearly every exchange he threw, ensuring he had a successful exit where he took no return fire. This was often combined with a change of position for good measure. But these adjustments were in many ways things that Ali and Foreman shared in common. Where Holmes was truly comparable to Foreman was when he was using grappling to set up hard, fight-ending shots. It was incredibly impressive how Holmes could disturb his opponent's guard and posture mid-combination. One way he did this was to send opponent's punches veering off course when they tried to counter. He then used the time it took them to try to regain their guard to land more hard punches. Holmes also liked to frame mid-combination. This could do several things like block their vision, or maintain the space needed to throw a hard shot. But the truly advanced use of this technique was to disrupt an opponent's balance by pushing their shoulder as they threw. This required expert timing, but when he pulled it off, Holmes disrupted opponent's balance enough to both defend against their attack and set up his own harder shots. Another way that Holmes used his opponent's attack against them was to pull down their guard. It's impressive enough when Lomachenko does this against an opponent who's already beaten, shelling up on the ropes. But Holmes pulled this off in much more difficult scenarios. For instance, here he circles outside and pulls down the opponent's guard off of his jab. This sets up a hard right. Holmes would also use his opponent's punches against them turning a simple parry into a hand trap. At times, Holmes successfully pulled his opponent's hand all the way to their hip. Astonishingly, he usually did this with the cross parry, reaching across with his left to create an opening for his right. A similar technique worked at close range, with Holmes barring his opponent's left to set up his right uppercut. Now let's take a look at one final knockout to see how all of these tactics work together. Holmes lands a left hook, then a right. His opponent throws a counter left hook, and Holmes turn slips to let it just brush past. This keeps him in range to follow up. Holmes controls his opponent's rear hand and just connects with his own right, then follows up again with hard power punches before once more making contact to establish a control point. When his opponent tries to remove his hand, Holmes lets him, transitioning into a cross trap. This sets up a hard uppercut, and the opponent's one remaining hand isn't enough to blunt the impact. His opponent stunned, Holmes piles on. One more right to the temple, and he's ready to go. It's crazy to see such advanced tactics so casually thrown into a fight-ending exchange. 
It should be clear by now how criminally underrated Holmes was through no fault of his own. In the end, Ali's reign was taken by a friend, using many of the same techniques that Ali had taught him himself. Through Holmes, Ali's style and legacy lived on at the highest level. But as much as Holmes is tied to Ali, it should be very evident he was his own fighter with his own style. A style we really haven't seen the likes of since. If you'd like to learn more about these tactics yourself, you can check out my books on footwork, defense, and head movement. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.